So let's all open our minds to new possibilities as we welcome Aidan Stone. Can all of us be creative? Are we all born creative? Or are some people just... What do we think? Well, I'll tell you. No. No, of course not. Because we know, don't we? I mean, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? The world is full of dull people, isn't it? <laughs> so, you can't be creative, can they? Because there's us, and then there's, there's, there's the dull people who can't think of anything. Maybe it's such rubbish in my life! <laughs> Typically, we can expect that it's a 40-60 split between people who've got the potential to be genius, potential, and the people who uh, are just dull. 40-60 split. So in a room of this size, that's true too. So in this room, we have 40% geniuses, 60% dull ones. But which are which? Which are which? How do we know? Should we find out? <laughs> who think, uh, incidentally, who here thinks that they are highly creative? Let's just have a show of hands just to see who's going to admit it. What? Five? Okay, I'll ask the question in a different way. Who here thinks they're uh, a useless dullard who wouldn't recognise a brilliant idea if it came up and bit them on the nose? <laughs> okay, look, we look around, this is the 40%. <laughs> yes. These are the, keep your hands up because the other people need to see your face. Because these are the people that you need to go to in the breaks with your problems because these are the people who are able to solve them. So how do you feel? How do you feel? Justified. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's what, there's always somebody, so at this point someone says, I knew it, I knew it, I just knew it. <laughs> Who's the people, I have put hands up the people who did it wrong. The people who put the, uh, the right foot on top, that's the 60%. Okay, so how do you feel? I think it's wrong. Oh, he's, 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 doubt, he's, doubting, he's, doubting, he's doubting it, but yeah. he hasn't necessarily got the, you know, the power, the brain power. So he's not able to back up that. He's just, you know, operating in the dark. And it's at this point that there's always there's someone says, well, that explains everything. <laughs> Everybody is born highly creative. Everybody is born equal in that respect. The answer question you should be asking is, what are you going to do with it? And it's what you do with it that makes a difference. Everybody has the same potential to be creative in one way or another. I was thinking everybody's an artist, everybody's a brilliant painter, but everybody has the same potential to be creative because that's what being human means. That's what separates us from, from, from the animals. That's what founded our civilization. When we stopped evolving, but we created our environment. We man manipulate the environment instead of the environment manipulating us. And that's what humans are. So we are creative, so don't ever think that you're not because you are, because you have to be, because you're you. The point is, you don't need to rely on somebody, me or anybody, to say you're creative or not, because everybody is equally creative. We're in the business of ideas. And that's very interesting in this time in our civilization because we're entering a new age, an age that pundits have called the conceptual age or the age of ideas. I asked the question, what if, what if I did this? What would happen? I became a scientist. <coughs> now if you become a true scientist that you are experimenting with live data, and you don't necessarily <coughs> know the outcome, not only are you a scientist, but you're also a heretic. Because you've got the ability to upset the accepted order, rather like Galileo with his telescope saying, come on, to the religious orthodoxy, come on, Mr. Pope, come on. look, just look through it, just look through it, and then you will see that the moon is a place, with mountains and crates, a place, it's not a heavenly orbit, it's a, just have a look. No, said the Pope, and they put him in prison, and he's remained there for the rest of his life. So we'll become a heretic, we'll become a scientist, but not only did I become a scientist at that moment, I also became an artist, because in that moment, I wanted to manifest a certain outcome, I wanted to make a joke, I wanted to have a laugh. And if we, if we deliberately set out to manifest something, then we are an artist, that we, that's, what it, that's what it's about. Now look at this picture here, and tell me what you see. Now most people say, a square. Well, where's the square? And the people say, well it's there, in the middle there, surrounded by those little black lines. 
but that's not there. There is no square there. All that is there is a collection of random lines. But our brains have a visual intelligence rule that states this must mean something. What I'm looking at must mean something. And our brain creates the square in the middle of those lines. And some of you will swear that the square is actually a lighter shade of white than the surrounding page. But it isn't. Uh, when I was seven, I, I, I won a competition in school. It was the best painting in the school. I did the best painting in the school. And I, got a, and I won a prize. I won £4.50 or something like that. <coughs> and uh, I bought a plastic telescope. So I could prove to the point. <laughs> You've all heard of the left and right brain, but people misunderstand what that actually is about, and they think that it's like this. I'm a left brain person. I'm reliable, sensible, dependable, and lots of other words that end in ibble. I like doing things logically, sequentially, everything in its place, everything at the right time, and in the right order. <laughs> That's exactly my point, is that you're not innovative enough, you're not creative enough, you're not flexible enough. Come on, let's not predator! Top of the food chain! But <laughs> you need more than that. Oh, well, you're cheap. cheap! You're cheap. I'm a right brain person. I'm an artiste. I turn up when I want, do what I like. Genius is mysterious. The truth is, if you were just a left brain or a right brain and only used half your brain, you would be a half-wit. Then he got out another match and he said, don't get out another match, just tell us the idea. And he said, look, it's like, it's like, he said, it's like, it's like, remember Einstein? Einstein said that the most, biggest moment of joy in his life was, he said, when he imagined, Einstein, imagined being in a lift where the cable had been cut and he imagined in a in free fall and he imagined taking his keys out of his pocket and letting them go. And Einstein said in that moment, that was the moment he understood what relativity was about. And he went back and he came up with the special and then the general theory of relativity from seeing the answer. Because if I just told you the idea, you wouldn't have learnt anything. And he said, in fact, that's indicative of what's wrong with our, with our society, especially education, he said. He said, the context is more interesting. The context of where that data came from, where the formula came from, the meaning, the people behind it. He said, that, that's what's important. I just give you the idea. You won't have learned anything. You won't understand what, where, where the idea has come from. Well, what would you do? What would you have done in that position? Do a joint venture? Yeah, it's, it's, it's about how you relate to creativity and where you find it and where it comes from, because that company wasn't very creative. What they said was, yeah. If one of our workers has thought of an idea, it must be so obvious, it must be staring us in the face if one of our plebs has thought of it. So um, what we'll do is we'll, um, we won't pay him, we'll go and find the idea ourselves and we'll keep all the money. He had the data, he had all the information, but he also had a big picture. He also was able to see the system as a whole. He stood back and he saw the whole thing and that's how he noticed the two working together, and that's a metaphor for creativity. You've got to do everything that you can, everything that you plan, everything that you can. My clients don't want to see me spending their hard-earned cash looking professional. Right! <laughs> I've spent millions of years building up my reputation. <laughs> but what's more interesting than that is you fast forward 5, 10, 50, 20 years, 30 years, and John will, will, will not only fight that he's not an artist, but also that he's not necessarily creative, because creative is something that weird people do. You know, he'll fight to defend his, his position, but not only that, he'll actually do down those things and say, well, actually, uh, it's not only not for me, it's actually irrelevant. Creativity, rubbish. But art, boring. And that's why he's an accountant. <coughs> actually, he's not. He's not. <laughs> <laughs> he, um, he, actually, no, he actually went to prison. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then he escaped. Became an accountant. <laughs> no, he did. He did. The people have come along to see top speakers, they don't want us to look at your rubbish. I'm do what I like. You've got to think outside the box. I'll tell you what, 
Well, if you all stop, let me tell you what I said. We don't want to see it. Come on. Come on. Do you want to see his product? Yeah. It looks like you're on. Yeah. <laughs> But right when you think it isn't the domain of painters, it's the domain of inventors. It's the domain of explorers. It's the domain of true scientists who ask those questions, what if? It's the domain of the artist who says, how can I manifest something in this world, something new? Be a creator. And that's what we all, we all are. That's our, that's our birthright. survive into the future, but shape the future. And as artists and scientists, with our creativity, that's what we can all do. I've been Aidan Stone, thanks very much.